Hey friends, Ash here with Gent Sense. Hope you're doing really well. It's time for another This Week in Fragrance where I talk to you guys about upcoming new fragrance releases. And believe it or not, I actually haven't shot a video in about a week and a half now. I was on vacation. Now I'm back. We got a lot of new stuff to talk about. We got a new Jimmy Choo fragrance. <laughs> I know that's what everybody clicked this video for. It's Jimmy Choo. There's also a new uh, Dior Sauvage. Kind of a kind of a hidden gem fragrance line. Not many people know about Dior Sauvage. Keep it hush hush on the low down. We've also got a new Bulgari Man, a new Lacoste fragrance, and a new Calvin Klein. So that's something too. Let's jump into it. Let's talk about these new releases. And guys, as usual, today's This Week in Fragrance is sponsored by FragranceUSA.com. Link in the description to their website. Use the code GENT15 anytime you shop there to save 15% off. They're a great fragrance website with fantastic prices on niche scents and designer fragrances. Like I said, there's a link down below. Make sure to check them out. And thank you again to FragranceUSA for sponsoring This Week in Fragrance. Okay, let's jump into these fragrances. First off, Jimmy Choo, Urban Hero, Gold Edition. Yes. Now, Jimmy Choo, Urban Hero was, was not really well loved. It got panned by a lot of people, kind of, you know, they busted on it, dumped on it, myself included. It's a boring fragrance if you've smelled a lot of stuff, but if you're looking for just something wearable and you're a younger guy, you want something, you know, pull compliments, it'll, it'll do it for you, probably. And now they got a new one, Jimmy Choo Urban Hero Gold Edition, a new woody fruity fragrance for men launched in 2021 under the Urban Hero Collection. A bold and creative soul inherent in street art, saturated with unique and attractive top notes of pineapple and blood orange, which emphasize the sweetness of lavender and lush tonka in the heart. Finally, the fragrance is based on harmonious and masculine sandalwood and oak moss. So we've got a top of pineapple and blood orange, a mid of lavender and tonka, a base of sandalwood and oak moss. So that top pineapple blood orange, actually really similar to the top of loam rojas, but um, not the exact same. So can't tell too much from the note breakdown. I would say, you know, Aventus, it's not. People always see pineapple and ooh, Aventus, but looking at everything else here, I would be shocked if this is another explorer type scent. That being said, weirder things have happened. What can I say? I'm, I'm not super hyped for it, but uh, hopefully it's better than the original. And once again, we've got a, a fragrance brand that's, that's trying to appear very hip and they go with this kind of graffiti street art kind of thing, just with the gold edition being spray painted on the bottle. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Next up, let's talk about Bulgari Man Terra Essence, the newest in their Essence line. This is an enveloping and virile fragrance, a return to the origins, to the true essence of life, a new journey that starts from where it all begins. Man Terra Essence is a rich, warm fragrance with top notes of sun-kissed citrus, vetiver in the heart, and in the base, this Terra Accord that has been designed especially by master perfumer. Alberto Marias, which gives a real earthy richness to the fragrance. The ingredients are made unique through innovative accords, such as the interpretation of an ultra contemporary and original vetiver and the exclusive Terra Accord, especially created for this fragrance. Bulgari Man Terra Essence is a tribute to the power of the earth, its richness and fertility through an enveloping and elegant signature. It represents the territory and our origins, confirming nature as an essential source of inspiration for the nourishment, growth, and creation of man. So we've got a top of Kalamondin orange and citron, a mid of vetiver and orris, and a base of styrax and earthy notes. Now, the first thing that pops into my mind, and I'm sure a lot of your minds as well, when you hear citrus with vetiver, with kind of an earthy undertone, is Terre d'Hermes. That's definitely the first thing that I thought of, it was immediate. Then of course there's Oris in here to kind of throw things for a loop, you know? Kind of switch things up a little bit. Remains to be seen though how the Oris or Iris is going to be used in this fragrance, whether it's gonna be something that's powdery, 
and fresh and soapy, or if it's a, a little bit denser and heavier. My guess, and I could be wrong here, but my guess would be that it's just kind of a nuance, maybe just like a, a slight bit of fresh iris around the edges of the scent, not really a focal point. Now, <laughs> the fragrance is gonna come out and be an iris bomb and I'll just be like, <laughs> Looking forward to it though, and uh, looking at the note breakdown and, and hearing how they're pitching this, sounds like it will be better than Glacial Essence. So that's something. Next up, Hidden Gem Alert, Dior Sauvage Elixir. Yeah, that is the new Dior Sauvage flanker that's coming out. <laughs> and you, you just know that the people at Chanel right now are like, what? We don't have a new Blue to Chanel flanker ready yet. Johnson, did you see Dior Sauvage Elixir? How long until Blue de Chanel Potion is ready? How long? We're at least six months out, sir. You're fired. I imagine that's how things are going at Chanel right now. Up until now, for the most part, Blue de Chanel kind of set the pace for Dior Sauvage to follow. So there was Blue de Chanel Eau de Toilette, and then Dior Sauvage Eau de Toilette, and then Blue de Chanel Eau de Parfum, Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum. Blue de Chanel Parfum, Dior Sauvage Parfum. You get the idea. But now, Dior Sauvage, after their very cool spray, which Chanel actually followed up on and did their own spray version of earlier, which I covered in a, a This Week in Fragrance maybe a month or so ago. Now Dior Sauvage is coming out with Elixir. So now Chanel is kind of playing catch up with Dior. Dior Sauvage Elixir. It's a new spicy woody fragrance for men launched in 2021 under the Dior Sauvage collection for men. Sauvage Elixir is a highly concentrated perfume steeped in iconic Sauvage freshness with an intoxicating spicy center, a custom lavender in the mid and a smooth, sweet woody blend that forms its powerful, honorable, and enchanting trail sign. Yeah, that, that's lost in translation. Trail sign? Trail sign. Scent trail? Scent trail? Yeah, I think I think scent trail sounds better. The perfumer, Francois Dimache, created the perfume Sauvage Elixir as a beautiful liqueur with special ingredients. The superior quality of the raw materials makes this concentration possible. Sauvage Elixir is a unique and rare perfume, like a red moon in the night sky. That, I think, I think that means vampires. Sauvage Elixir concentrates all its energy in a single size, 60 milliliter dark blue lacquered glass. Bottle does look good. It, it looks a little bit different, obviously, because it's only coming into 60 mil size. So it's just, you know, that, that's what you get. 60 mils, take it or leave it. And, and they switched it up a little bit, made it, uh, I guess, stand out more from the others in the line. And they say that this rewrites the rules of men's perfumery by exploring the boundaries of extreme concentration. It's never been done before. Never seen a fragrance that had extreme concentration. And you're following in my least favorite trend of all time right now. Uh, three notes, a top of lavender, a mid of spices, and a base of woods. That could not possibly sound more boring. Well, it's got a little lavender, some spices, some woods. So here we go, Dior Sauvage Elixir. This is gonna be the most expensive Dior Sauvage on a price per milliliter basis for sure. I would guess, and the, again, this is me spitballing, I would, I would guess something like $150 per 60 milliliters probably is what they're gonna ask. It's probably not going to project as well as the Eau de Toilette. Again, could be wrong here, but that would be my anticipation that it would not project as hard as the Eau de Toilette. Uh, it will probably have a whole bunch of staying power and last forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. But you might have some people initially who are like, wait a second, this is an elixir. The Eau de Toilette projects more. Uh, and that's just kind of a misunderstanding of, of concentration versus performance. It doesn't always mean amplified projection, sometimes it does, but with uh, the way that Dior Sauvage has gone in its evolution, um, I would expect this one not to project as much as the lower concentration versions. 
I would also expect it to be deeper, richer with the heavier concentration on actual woodiness as opposed to ambroxan. That would again be my anticipation. Um, I would think there's gonna be a touch of citrus in here, but probably not too much. And I think overall, it's, uh, it's gonna be probably a little bit divisive. I, I think, and again, spitballing, spitballing here, but I think that people that are more into fragrances on the whole are gonna like it more than the original versions. And I think people looking for just a super versatile compliment monster are probably gonna prefer like the EDT and the EDP, but we'll see when it comes out. Next up, Lacoste Match Point Eau de Parfum. Lacoste Match Point, when emotion propels you to action. Breathe in the thrilling freshness of this new masculine Eau de Parfum by Lacoste. The EDP follows last year's original version, now in a higher concentration, with an explosive fusion of two contrasting accords. The green energy of basil and gentian bitterness combined in a breathtaking freshness of the original are replaced with the deep freshness of lemon contrasted with lavender and cardamom. The thrilling black elegance of woody vetiver is supercharged with the depth of cypriol and cashmere and taking strength and intensity to the next level. Yeah, I kind of acted like I was getting hyped there, but I'm, yeah. <laughs> the original match point grew on me over time. I actually think it's pretty solid, good for spring, good for summer, nice casual fragrance, nice office fragrance, pick it up from a discount or for a good price, you're good to go. It's not bad. This one, I will definitely buy. I'm hoping it's an improvement. I, I think it, I think it probably will be. It says it has a top of grapefruit, lemon, and pink pepper, mid of gentiana, if I'm mispronouncing that, my bad, lavender and cardamom, and a base of cashmere, cypriol, patchouli, and vetiver. I like the note breakdown. I like that there's a little bit that they're doing to give it a, a slight twist, we'll say, while keeping it really concentrated on being a wearable fragrance from what I can tell with a lot of utility to it. And Lacoste fragrances at discounters, you can usually pick them up for a fantastic price. And sometimes they do have great, you know, little cheapy hidden gems like uh, Lacoste Loam Intense. That one's really solid. So I'm hoping this is gonna be another kind of feather in their cap in that sense. Last up, Calvin Klein Defy. And this one looks like they did not try a whole bunch. <laughs> the bottle is like this. I mean, it, it's kind of plain, right? I mean, right? Yeah, is it just me? No, I think it's pretty plain. And they're giving us how many notes? Four. It's almost worse when they give you four because it's like they think to themselves, you know, three, that's, that's not enough. Give them four, that's good. So they've got a top of bergamot, lavender, and, and that's it. <laughs> and then a mid of vetiver and a base of amber. This is a fresh, masculine, and addictive fragrance. Reveals a daring contrast of invigorating freshness and powerful woods. An eau de toilette for men who break boundaries while exploring their authentic truths and the contrast within. I've said it before, but I swear to you guys, sometimes they just put words together and they don't actually think about what it even means. So this is for someone who breaks boundaries while you explore your authentic truth and the contrasts within yourself. What? It opens with an addictive citrus blend, highlighting crisp bergamot and fresh lavender. Rugged and earthy vetiver, responsibly sourced from Haiti, hmm, is the heart of this men's eau de toilette and that connects the vibrant textural elements with the rich and alluring base of amber. And uh, it says the packaging is a modern bottle that reflects uh, the iconic codes of Calvin Klein, denim blues and minimalism infused with the sensual edge. <laughs> sensual edge? Okay. I <laughs> Oh man. But the uh, Calvin Klein Defy, it's coming out. It's got four notes. Um, look, look for it at a TJ Maxx near you, probably next year. There we go, five new fragrances. We got Jimmy Choo, Bulgari, Christian Dior, Lacoste, and Calvin Klein. Let me know in the comments which one you're looking forward to the most. I imagine most of you are gonna say Dior Sauvage. Just, uh, you know, 
That's my big brain energy. Shout out again to Fragrance USA for sponsoring the video. Link in the description to their website, Gent15. Save yourself 15% off. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there, guys. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.